did lots and lots of things for the South Bay Astrological Society, which sadly is now defunct. Um, he has written a book, actually it was published a long time ago, your book. Horoscope for the New Millennium. Horoscopes for the New Millennium, and that was in 97, and actually is now working on a, is it a new and updated version, Horoscope for the New Age Beyond 2012. Right. And so he'll give you some more information, because that book is you know, practically hot off the presses here. Um, in his spare time, when he's not doing astrology um, or writing on his book, he's also a musician, he composes, he's a radio announcer, he has his fingers in lots of different pies. So um, I'm actually very excited to have you here tonight, Voice of Experience, and um, to bring us up to speed here on 2013 and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, can I have the first one on? Yes. Okay. The December uh, 21st, 2012 yeah, okay. one. Hang on one second here. Let me turn this one. Yeah. First things first. 2012 comes before 2013, so she's working on that. Okay. So uh, I guess you all know that the world ended. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? And we even had a party to celebrate called "The End of the World as You Know As We Know It." You all familiar with the REM song? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we sang the song. Another good song I really like called Good Time. Anybody here know that song, Good Time? It's always a good time. Nobody, okay. What? Okay, anyway, um, so we are, we're crossing, a, I call it a crossing point of no return, because I think we're, this chart symbolizes that we're crossing over into a new land, a new world, and we can't go back to the old one. And so that's indicated by the great yod. You're all familiar with the yod that happened on December 21st about, that is so big in this chart. Um, Saturn in Scorpio, and that is in mutual reception. You all know what mutual reception is? Pluto in Capricorn is in Saturn sign, and Saturn is in Pluto sign, and then 150 degrees from each is Jupiter and Gemini. And so that's the main uh, signature of this great uh, chart for the end of the world as we know it, and the beginning of the new world. And, you know, with Pluto and Saturn, it force us to confront realities that we've been avoiding. And so we can't go back to the past and just ignore them anymore. We have to make adjustments and we have to do reconstruction and reorganization. Scorpio and Saturn have to do with reorganizing, rebuilding structures. So the main agenda then for the following years now is to reconstruct our American political system and also our global corporate structure so that it is sustainable because the way we're going now, we're going off a bunch of cliffs. Now you all know about the fiscal cliff, and you all know about global warming, and, and these are things that we have to deal with now. We can't go back to ignoring them. They're gonna make themselves felt from now on in ways we have to deal with. And, um, and so it looks like it's going to give us an opportunity to expand our view and our perspective, because that's what Jupiter does. Being in high focus, it's very expansive. So if we can deal with these crises, if we can face up to them, then it's very positive. We'll be, uh, have a lot of good fortune, but only if we deal with things. You know, sometimes happiness takes work. So that's um, the great yod, the great chart of the end of the world. So there's a few other things I want to talk about. We mentioned uh, before, with the previous speaker, the Uranus-Pluto square. Now I'm very much into squares and conjunctions and cycles. That's mainly what my book was about, Horoscope for the New Millennium. And you all know that in the 1960s we had the conjunction 
exact in 1966, and I call it the people power revolution. Because ever since then, the methods of people power have been the way you make change in the world. As opposed to before the 60s, it was about uh, a um, secret conspiracy to take control of the means of production and, you know, sort of from the top down to make uh, transformations. That was the socialist movement before that. And that began at the conjunction of 1850 when uh, Marx wrote the uh, Communist Manifesto in 1848. And we had a whole bunch of, a whole series of revolutions that happened in 1848. How many of you are familiar with that? And so the conjunction was coming together there of Uranus and Pluto in the beginning of a whole new cycle. And then it reached the uh, full moon of the cycle when Uranus and Pluto were on opposite sides of the Earth. That was around the time of the uh, Russian Revolution, which got started, got going in 1905. And then there was a previous movement before that. You all familiar with uh, the French Revolution? Mm -hmm. And did you know that it happened during an exact Uranus-Pluto opposition? That was like the full moon of the previous cycle. And that was sort of a democratic liberty movement. And the American Revolution was part of that. And that started back in around 1710 when they locked up Voltaire back in the Bastille. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the beginning of that movement, the beginning of Freemasonry and the Enlightenment and so on. So what we have with this square that's happening is the uh, second, I mean the uh, first quarter phase of the cycle. And so that is also what we're seeing is a, a chain of revolutions like you had in 1848. The dominoes fell. So that uh, is going to be a sign of the 60s movement coming to its first quarter phase. And then we'll have the full moon phase, full moon phase in about uh, 2047. And that will be the climax of what began in the 60s. It's a great revolutionary cycle. Now, um, are you all familiar with the uh, Neptune-Pluto cycle? No. Okay. Um, sometimes I like to, I don't know if we have time, but I'll just take a couple of questions or suggestions about the times in history when civilization went through its greatest changes. Uh, great art movements, great um, spiritual awakenings, um, political upheaval, rise and fall of empires, all these great events. When do you think they happened? Can I hear a couple of suggestions? The 1880s. Okay, 1880s. Yeah. The Renaissance. The Renaissance. <laughs> Any others? 500 BC. 500 BC. You sure you guys? Was it 1250? When did they build the French Gothic cathedrals? Uh, in the uh, 12th and 13th century. Yeah, it starts, I think it starts like 1210. Oh, it was really begun in, 11, in the 1140s, the Gothic style. Yeah, yeah it's great when they, when they really do it. Because it's not, it's, it's, because it's a French Gothic, or no, it's the Scandinavian first, and that's like 1210, 1215. Okay. So it's a whole new style of architecture. Okay. Well, uh, some of you were, must have been reading my book because you got the cycle pretty well. Um, anyway, it's a 500-year cycle, and the last conjunction happened in 1892. So we had the beginning of a new phase of civilization lasting 500 years in 1892, and that covered the late 1880s and early 1890s. And the reason, one reason I mention it is because I have a chart for that day, April 26, 1892. I call it the horoscope of humanity, horoscope of today's humanity. 
And then I made progressions from the chart. You all know what progressions are. One day equals one year. And so that gave me a lot of insight into future events. And one of those was in uh, 2001 when Jupiter turned stationary in Aries in that chart. And so I predicted there would be a holy war in 2001. Came pretty close, I think. And then there's also a sextal between Uranus and the Sun in this in the year 2013. And so that is a signal of the revolutionary times that we're in. Sun sextal Uranus in the progress chart. And then in the early 2020s I have a interesting, I don't know exactly what it means, but we have a Sun square Neptune and a Venus square Pluto not Pluto, Jupiter, Venus square Jupiter, all within semi-squares to each other. So it kind of, kind of suggests sort of like scandal or maybe some excess returning or some optimism. And um, so I want to talk about Jupiter a little bit um, because we have a pattern that's happening this year, and the previous speaker touched on that too. Um, of course, I'm covering a lot of different territory from her. But. And that is what I call the Jupiter return. Now, you all know about the United States horoscope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you all agree that Sagittarius is rising? <laughs> OK, well, that's what I think. And Sagittarius rising makes Gemini the seventh house for that chart. And Jupiter is in early Cancer in that chart, and I'm going to want to have the second uh, slide here pretty soon. Um, Jupiter returning to its own place in the United States horoscope in the seventh house. Now, what that seems to be, what that seems to indicate is every 11 to 12 years or so, the United States Uncle Sam gets on his high horse and goes out to save the world. And what that generally involves is um, either going, actually going to war or making some kind of action that may lead to a future war, or if we're real lucky, activism for peace. But in some way, the United States feels that it's the world's savior and it has to go um, take care of some just cause or make the world safe for democracy. So if you look in history, um, the war with Mexico, the, uh, uh, the First World War, Second World War, the Vietnam War, and then the last two were very interesting. First, on the very day that Jupiter returned to five degrees Cancer, um, George H.W. Bush said, well, gee whiz, there's a drug lord ruling over Panama and we better get rid of him because he kicks, he kicks somebody in the ass. So we um, invaded Panama, killed thousands of people, and uh, rescued Panama from General Noriega. You all remember that? And then months later, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. And so we had to go uh, deal with that situation. And we had the Gulf War. So then it comes around again, and another Bush is in office. And uh, in um, the late summer of 2001, I said there was going to be another one of these events. I predicted both of these cycles, what would happen. And so, in the summer of 2001, we got hit in the World Trade Center. And Bush said, well, we've got to go uh, save the world again. And so we did. And by the way, um, the operation to save Panama was called Operation Just Cause. Remember that? And of course, then right after we invaded Afghanistan, we decided we also had to invade Iraq, and that was called Operation Iraqi Freedom. <laughs> operation Enduring Freedom? I think so. I don't know. Anyway, so guess where Jupiter is coming this year? Well, here he is in July, returning to its place in the U.S. horoscope. And so 
it seems like Syria is in desperate need of help and that we might be tempted to go and do something over there. Um, now, we don't always get sucked in, and I think we have a pretty uh, level-headed leader, and so it may not be too bad. On the other hand, it is a dangerous moment, and I don't see a great war, but it could be another involvement that is, ends up being pretty costly if we're not careful. But what I also see in Ju July 2013 is the greatest, maybe, the greatest grand trine in history. And so I want to alert you to that because, you know, I don't always want to be the bearer of bad news. I think we should have some good news. And this is a great opportunity, great opportunity. It could be that we may be drawn into foreign affairs and, and we could be doing some very constructive things. Remember, we're reorganizing, reconstructing things. And there's a lot of people over in the Middle East that are trying to achieve freedom and develop constitutions. And it's interesting because this is the Grand Trine of Neptune and Pisces, 4 degrees 57 minutes. Jupiter and Cancer, 4 degrees 52 minutes. Saturn and Scorpio, 4 degrees 53 minutes. Now, I've only seen one figure like that involving Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune that was that tight. And that was on November 14, 1989. And that was when Saturn and Neptune made a conjunction with Uranus nearby, and Jupiter opposed it. And that was in 1989, in the fall of 1989. You all remember what happened then? The wall fell on November 9th, and then almost immediately there was a velvet revolution in Czechoslovakia. And another series of revolutionary dominoes. And within three degree, three minutes, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune all lined up. So now they're going to form a trine. At the same time, that Uranus and Pluto are forming this revolutionary square. And uh, I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I think it is coming into fruition of this revolutionary movement. I mean, what could be better? It is, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy, and we've had some horrible things happening in Syria. So I want to mention this grand trine also because of two previous instances when we had Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune in a grand trine. The first one was in September 1787 in air signs. How many of you, and it seems, seems to be when I've given this talk recently that most people don't remember what happened. How many of you know what happened in September 1787? No? Not discovery of Uranus. U.S. Constitution. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune in a very tight grand trine when the United States Constitution was adopted. Or not adopted, but developed. Um, then it had to go to the states, and each state ratified it one after another. But this was the moment when they wrote it and they, the assembly agreed to it. And that was... Uh, Neptune in Libra, Jupiter in Gemini, like today, and Saturn in Aquarius. So, I mean, the other instance is in the 60s. Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune within three degrees, and that was also like today's, uh, next year's grand trine, in water signs. A lot of feeling, a lot of emotion, and that happened when they had the bee in in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And uh, flower children, the counterculture. And that also happened, it happened in 1966 in the summer and then it reformed in uh, January, February of 1967. So, are we gonna have the flower children return? I don't think so. Um, how many of you here are 50 years old or younger. 
Raise your hand. Oh, not too bad. Oh, how many of you are 45 or younger? Oh, okay. Because I've been concerned that Generation X isn't showing up at these things. Because uh, if it's just going to be us baby boomers getting old together and the ruminating, old, say, 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 yeah, indigo ruminating about astrology oh, while we get old. And, <laughs> so I'm glad to see at least some somewhat younger people here. Um, but uh, the young people today are, are a little bit less interested in this stuff, and so I don't know if there's going to be that going on again, but, but it could be a very uplifting time. People could be celebrating breakthroughs. But that is, of course, that doesn't mean that revolutionary upheaval is going to stop, because, as you know, the square is going to continue for several more years. And I see another highlight in, uh, like, April and May of 2014, because you have a grand square with Jupiter and Mars with the Uranus-Pluto conjunction. I mean, square. Uranus-Pluto square. That will be Uranus in Aries, Pluto in Capricorn, Jupiter in Cancer, and Mars in Libra. But the importance of Mars is that it is turning stationary. As you may know, planets get more powerful when they are stationary, and then turn retrograde, and then turn direct stationary again. It focuses the energy of, of the... Uh, planetary zeitgeist on that planet. That planet becomes a focus of energy. And very often, very violent or the beginning, very violent events or the beginning of wars, especially if other aspects are in force, break out at that time. So it's a dangerous period. Well, would you repeat that again? It's the Uranus Pluto gets squared to Mars? Or? Okay. Uh, you have the Uranus Pluto square. Uranus in Aries, Pluto in Capricorn, Jupiter here in Cancer, and this is early in the spring of 2014, and then Mars turning stationary in Libra, all forming a grand cross. And Libras like me are going to have to be careful in that time. And by the way, my Mercury is 8 degrees Libra, so that's interesting tied to this group. Good place for me to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, you know, uprisings of enthusiasm and uh, more reckless adventures, reckless revolutions and rebellions um, could be on an upsurge uh, the spring of 2014. And then, um, later in 2014 and early 2015, I have some more good news. And that is that Jupiter is going to be in a singleton. It's going to be occupying half the sky. And when you got that, you have more optimism, more generosity. Um, so you could see a, a more, um, more prosperous period there for a little while. Things could be on an upswing. And I don't think there's going to be a boom time uh, this decade. I think we're in for a, a long time of unsteady economic times. And it's going to get unstable and uncertain again toward the end of the decade. When you have the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, that always gets a little scary, a little unsettled. And we're in a phase, um, what some people call a crisis age right now. And uh, this has to do with a couple things. Now, are you all familiar with the meaning of the Uranus return to the United position in the United States horoscope? Um, again, the previous speaker alluded to this, uh, not directly, but um, Uranus goes around the, the zodiac every 83 to 84 years, mm -hmm. say 83 years. And in 1607, we had the first colony, in Jamestown. Then when it returned there, we had what we call King William's War which was the struggle that made Britain a parliament, parliamentary system, and deposed uh, the Stuarts and installed uh, William and Mary. And the battle was also fought in the colonies. It was called King William's War. 
against the French, I guess. I don't, I'm too familiar with it. But it was a great crisis. Then, around 83, four years later, you had the Revolutionary War. And that was when Uranus um, came to the place that it is in the United States horoscope, because that is when the United States horoscope is for the Declaration of Independence. And Uranus in that chart is in nine degrees Gemini. And then it came around to that point again the day that Fort Sumter was bombed. And that was the Civil War. And then it came around there again during D-Day, World War II. And leading up to these times were very uncertain, very difficult periods. We call them crisis ages. And there's a couple of gentlemen who wrote a book called The Fourth Turning. Have any of you heard of that? Anybody else know about that? The Fourth Turning? That has to do with the cycle of generations. And they don't believe in astrology, but coincidentally, they came up with a cycle that they defined exactly as 84 years. <laughs> and it's, it's called the uh, saculum, they call it, after the Roman Empire's 100-year cycle. But this is 84 years in the history of the United States and the colonies. And it's called the saculum, and it consists of four turnings and on the analogy of seasons. And, uh, for example, the 1950s was the springtime. And then the 1960s was summer. They call it an awakening. And then we have the 1980s and 90s. They call that the third turning, the unraveling, they call it. And things just sort of have a... An attitude turns a little bit more negative towards society. But people feel more fulfilled individually. Whereas in the springtime, people are alienated and you have men in gray flannel suits walking around without any inner gyroscopes. Mm. And, but society works great. That's the springtime of the cycle. But then we reach winter, and that's the crisis phase. And remember 1930s, the early 30s, what was going on in the sky? You had Uranus, Pluto square. What you had in 1931 or so was the previous Uranus-Pluto square squared by Saturn in a T-split. And um, Uranus-Pluto-Saturn. And then uh, Jupiter also joined it for a little while. So guess what we had in around 2008, 2009, 2010? Uranus-Pluto square joined by Saturn in a T-square. And guess what happened? The Great Recession. You all know what happened in the early 30s, right? Great stock market crash, Great Depression. So we went there again. And they call that the beginning of the fourth turning in the uh, 1929. And then that lasted through the Second World War. And so they've decided, as I predicted they would decide, that in 2008 was the beginning of the fourth turning. So that's what we're in. We're in a period of crisis leading up to a great climax. And guess when that will happen? When Uranus returns to its position in America's horoscope. And that's due in 2025 or 26 or 27. About that. In 2025, Neptune enters Aries. It's in Pisces now. We all like it in Pisces. Because it's, it's really awakening our sensitivities, if you can tune into it. Quick comment. Yeah. The fourth turning almost always line up with Neptune being in either Virgo or Pisces. Mm -hmm. So the, the year spans are roughly mm -hmm. 14 years. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, Neptune was in late Virgo in the United States horoscope and it went into Libra and French came to the rescue, 1778, and you had a world war. Then, Neptune went around to Pisces, and then when it crossed into Aries is also the time when Fort Sumter was bombed and the Civil War started, almost to the day. And uh, looking at the United States horoscope with Sagittarius rising, 
you have Aries is at the bottom in the fourth house. So it's like a domestic. And so that's what led me decades ago to think that the crisis is going to be mainly a domestic crisis. And that means, well, at the worst possible scenario would be another civil war. Uh, a breakup of the country. It could be a peaceful breakup. We just decide America's too big. We've got to have it smaller. Break up into regions. Secession could happen again. Because Neptune's going to be in the same place it was in the Civil War. And what's interesting, we know that Uranus is going to be in the same place it was in the Civil War, the Revolution, and World War II. And Pluto, for the first time, will be returning to its position in the U.S. horoscope in 2022, and then moving into Aquarius. So you have all that going on in the 2020s. So that's going to be the climax of the crisis. So will we be able to fix our deadlocked and corrupt political system? Or will we have to break up and part separate ways into red states and blue states? That will be the, um, that is the issue. Now it could be that since Jupiter will also be returning to Gemini and Cancer in about 2025, we could have some foreign intervention. And it could be maybe other countries will intervene in the United States' affairs too. That hasn't happened before, but uh, if we're screwed up and we're splitting apart, maybe that could be an opportunity for somebody to uh, do some interesting things and side with one side or the other. Remember in the Civil War, Britain and France were considering intervening on one side or the other. And then Lincoln won a battle, and then that resolved that situation. They didn't. So, but one thing that I like about the 2020s is a couple things. First of all, remember the horoscope of humanity I talked about and the progressions that are going on in that chart? Well, the biggie is the progressed Mars. Now, in that chart, Mars is in late Capricorn, and it moved into Aquarius. So that sort of bring, brought a lot of Aquarian energy into the 20th century, according to this chart. And then at some point in the 20th century, Mars turned stationary in Aquarius and started going retrograde, as if, as if the cosmos was saying, OK, you have to stop. You can't keep going with this Aquarian progress. Um, and we don't believe in it anymore. Uh, so it was like our Mars was being uh, shackled. And at the same time in this chart, a couple years later, two or three years later, Uranus turned stationary in Scorpio. So you had Mars stationary in Aquarius in this chart, and a few years later, Uranus stationary direct in Scorpio as if a deeper kind of energy was coming out. Now, do you all know when that was? Guesses? Where is this chart? In my book. <laughs> the question is, I described this Mars turning stationary in Aquarius. And you all have an idea of what that might symbolize. A powerful Mars in Aquarius and then a powerful Uranus station in Scorpio. Okay. You give up? <laughs> now it's been coming to you? What? No? What did you say? Close. Landing on the moon, that's close. When did we land on the moon? 1969. What else happened around the 1969 or thereabouts? Jupiter was conjunct Uranus at that time, yeah. But what happened in society in the 60s? Assassinations in 68. Assassinations in 68. And wasn't there another assassination that made a big deal to us in this country? JFK, 1963. That was when Mars turned stationary retrograde in 1963. Uh, 
I'm talking about the progressed horoscope of humanity and what I was talking about, I was mentioning the Neptune-Pluto conjunction. But what is the humanity chart? The Neptune-Pluto conjunction happened in 1892 in April and then just a few days from that well, there was a total solar eclipse. And so I took the chart for the eclipse and I call that the chart of humanity today. Because that is, the old astrologers used new moon charts and eclipse charts to determine the meaning of a conjunction that happened nearby. And so that's what I did. And so I have the chart for April 26, 1892, and I have the time, it's in my book, I don't want to look it up. But that was the beginning of a 493 year cycle and you can make progressions to that chart and that's what I'm using to make these predictions and observations. And so Mars turned stationary in that chart in 1963 then in 1966 now get this at the same time that Uranus was conjoining Pluto Uranus turned stationary in Scorpio in this chart and so there is a link, a correspondence you can find throughout between the progressions and the transits in these charts. So why do I bring this up? Well, because if Mars is stationary retrograde, then what happens to it a little bit later? It turns direct, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes stationary again and turns direct. Mm -hmm. And so what have we been going through since the 60s? We've been going through frustration. We try to achieve things like Aquarius wants to do. Aquarius wants reforms and humanitarian advances. And, 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 um, and what happens to all of our uh, idealism and uh, reform movements and proposals in the last uh, 50 or 60 years, what's been happening to them? They get blocked. As if, well, we're just not permitted to do anything. Because Mars is retrograde. And you can't find this symbol anywhere except in this chart. And it's also what we call the end of progress, disillusionment with progress, postmodernism, all of these things. Pessimism, increasing cynicism, because we can't get anything done. But guess what? Mars is going to turn direct again in Aquarius in the year 2022. And that is about the time that Pluto goes into Aquarius and you have Uranus going into Gemini and Neptune into Aries. And so I predict that the frustration is going to lift and things are going to start moving. Like the dam is going to burst. Now Neptune and Aries, you have an idea what that might be like? Wherever Neptune is, that is the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times is reflected in the sign that it's in. So, of course, remember Neptune went into Aries last time in 1861. In the 1860s and 70s, what did you have there? Well, you had the Civil War, you had the Wars of Unification in Germany, you had the conquest of the West, um, Transcontinental Railroad, very aggressive, very energetic time. Uh, Darwin came out with the origin of species, and we had people thinking that... Um, Life is about the struggle for survival of the fittest. So, we're not going to do the same thing again. Hopefully we've progressed over that, but what we're going to have is a lot of action, a lot of activism. The floodgates of progress will open and things will start moving. Now we're always, I always get the comment, well, do we have to wait until 2022? <laughs> we have so many things to do. And I know, we, but we've been saying that for 50 years. I don't understand why you have the um, impression that we haven't been advancing in the last 50 years because I see things like personal computers and access to computers um, mm -hmm. have created the possibility of having a, um, a new Atlantean type of library in, in, in the form of the internet. Um, just the revolution of connectivity between people is, you know... Well, yeah, that kind of, of, that kind of thing has kind continued. Of but the idea of reforming society, of us being able to work together in politics. Ever hear of that word? Politics? People today say that politics doesn't mean anything. It's, it's failed. That's just Mars retrograde. 
of course, Mars is still in Aquarius. So yeah, um, the Aquarian age is dawning. We're getting all this innovation. We just had Neptune go through Aquarius. And we had 14 years of innovation and expansion of the internet. Yet G Neptune and Uranus come together in 1993. Uh, that was the beginning of the World Wide Web that year. So yeah, these things are happening. But it would be great if we could actually make progress in society again, if we could be optimistic again. So that's what I'm predicting will happen in uh, the 2020s. So, see anything important that I haven't covered yet? Um, Do you well, think that the optimism will be at a climax around 2020? Because when no, not a climax. Society aware um, in regard to time bending, things will start shifting at a different rate. Well, that sort of goes along with what they were saying about the end of the world day, that we'll have a different experience of time after the end of the Mayan calendar. People said that. Um, that's not going to change where the planets are and what they mean, but it could have to do with um, how we respond to them. Um, but I think that we've come to the belief over the past 50 years that progress has come to an end and in a lot of ways. And so that's what I think we will resume, a belief in progress. Yes? I just wanted to say I think there's an 800 pound gorilla in the room when it comes to progress on the planet Earth, which is until we figure out how to not have the population explosion Mm -hmm. the, the amount of people are, are unsustainable, or is unsustainable. You have these huge families, like Mitt Romney got on the stage, they brought all their kids. <laughs> it's terrifying. Well, he was a Mormon. Yeah, well, there's other, every, every single group thinks it's eugenics to try to slow down the population because they think uh -huh. it's a matter of numbers. And until we figure that one out, there can't be forward progress, ever. Because well, because if we just... Especially when they're taking away birth control, if possible. Well, <laughs> let me give you some good news about that. Let me give you some good news about that. We're going to have some questions and answers in a few minutes to both the speakers. So just want to see if I can wrap a few things up. Some good news about that. I was looking that up. And most of the countries, except in Africa, and even there, there's a decline in the fertility rate going on. I think that that problem could be easing, actually. So, but you're right, and, and it's not only population, but it's how we use energy. Yeah. It's a big, big thousand pound gorilla. Yeah. If we don't take control of these coal and oil companies, and we, right now we even subsidize them. I look at that and I say, my God, what are we doing that for? Um, so these are things we're going to need to do. We passed the point of no return, according to the end of the world chart. We're going to have to uh, deal with these or, you know, put up or shut up from now on. Um, but there's going to be increasing frustration in this decade because it's going to be like pulling teeth to get anything done. And then once, when we get to 2020, we get a period where there's a little bit more movement, some reforms. And then it becomes faster and faster and faster with each passing year until we get to 2025 and Neptune goes into Aries, the dam, bur the dam bursts, and action, action, action. And, and uh, not always pleasant action. But the good news is, and maybe I should end on this, during this time, we will have Uranus in Gemini, Neptune in Aries, and Pluto in Aquarius, all forming a trine sextal figure. So if you know your astrology, you know those are good aspects. So that is a signal that maybe, unlike in the Civil War when they weren't like that, uh, we will resolve this, we'll get through it in a positive way. That is my hope. So, and you can 
if you want more about my predictions, I'm working on my book, Horoscope for the New Age Beyond 2012. And I have a website. And it's on your, uh, at the bottom of your handout if you have it. Those of you who don't, um, might want to write this down if you're interested. Philosopherswheel.com. Philosopherswheel.com. And I have a link there to what I have so far in my new book. And I'll be putting a lot more on it. And eventually, I might publish it called Horoscope for the New Age Beyond 2012. Thanks. Well, how do you feel about that with the economic issues, especially around housing, because so many people think that's important? Well, I think housing is making a recovery. And I think. With these great grand trines and Jupiter and Singleton, I think things are going to pick up in the next couple of years. Uh, the recovery will continue. So that means that the fiscal cliff won't stall the recovery. That's my official prediction. <laughs> it might not look that way for a little while. And, but like I say, we're not going to have boom times because we're in a crisis. We haven't been dealing with the causes of the recession. We just sort of put a little bit of stimulus in there and hope the economic cycle comes back. So things will come back for a little while. And then toward the end of the decade, I think uh, since we haven't really done anything and we have, uh, dare I say, Republicans in office uh, blocking everything, uh, nothing much can be done until that changes. But in 2020, I see Every 20 years, there is a definite change in politics in Washington, in the zero year. That's when you have the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Remember in 1961, JFK said, let us begin, cross the new frontier, whole new era in politics. Then Ronald Reagan came in and said, well, government is the problem. And so you had 20 years of trickle-down economics. And then George Bush came in and said, well, we've got to change the world into an American empire. So we, now we're in the midst of that era. But so in 2020, a whole new agenda. A whole new world. Yeah. 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 How is the art field going to be doing like for a painter? Right. How the art field is going to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, take advantage of it this year and the next 13 years. Neptune in Pisces is great for the arts, especially if opening to inspiration. We, we've lost track of the value of inspiration. Nobody's talking about that anymore. You know, we have Neptune in Pisces. It's the best possible place. And then we have Jupiter in that progress chart in, in the early 2020s you had in the uh, progress chart of humanity that I talked about. Sun square Neptune, Venus square, Jupiter, all semi-square apart. Maybe, maybe uh, an artistic uh, renaissance. I've been predicting this renaissance for 30 years, and <laughs> it doesn't quite happen because we don't think about that stuff in this country. So no, we cut funding for it. We cut funding. We think science is the answer to everything, and, and so uh, we don't have this renaissance that we could have because we have more ability to, thanks to the internet and all the other things we've had for decades, to learn about other cultures, other times. We know more than any people ever in history. We have more access to creative tools. We're, we have more comfort and free time than any people has ever had. So why, where is this golden age? Maybe it's because of that retrograde Mars, I don't know, but <laughs> well, we have this great tool called YouTube. And by the way, I have a video on YouTube that you can tune into. Just search for me and it's all the predictions that came true that I made for the last decade. Uh, so you can search for Eric Meese and uh, see that. And also you can see a lot of great things on YouTube. And one of my favorite people to go watch on YouTube is Justin Bieber. <laughs> Laugh, 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 laugh. <laughs> but, you know, contrary to popular opinion, I think he's great.
greatest pop star in the, in the world right now. And he could be the vanguard of a creative revival. But the point is, anybody now can make a YouTube video. You can be a 15-year-old teenager and make a video. So uh, what a great tool. And you can get 800 million views if you're lucky. It's very egalitarian. It's really and I think that's an important change of energy that year, 2018, because it goes into Taurus, and uh, things are less frenetic for a little while, and also I think economically, uh, I've been predicting that there'd be a technological revolution coming along, I predicted that for years, a green revolution, and so Taurus is good for that. So that could be developing in the following years after that. And, and what year is the next Jupiter Saturn? Uh, what is 2020. 2020 Aquarius. Aquarius. Oh. Christmas solstice in 2020. Oh, the winter solstice in 2020. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Right. Uh -huh. That means, especially in the world of the establishment, a new agenda, a new phase.